action. Hi. Welcome to Geezer's 3. I'm Arnold. Sam is working the iPhone and Earl is getting a new hip. We don't pretend to have all the answers, but we certainly have plenty of opinions. Take obscenity. When I was a kid, I, I said to my mother, Mom, I knew my stuff. I showed my teacher where he was wrong, but he wouldn't admit it. That really, that really pissed me off, Mom. He was full of crap. She gave me such a thump, I, I fell off the chair. What'd you do that for, Ma? No, no son of mine uses such filthy language. You didn't grow up in the gutter. Crap, pissed off. Today, today eight-year-olds selling Girl Scout cookies use these words. So do, so do nuns on the bus. Once there were only three television networks, but, but each of them had a department of standards and practices responsible for the language that went on the air. For decades, damn and hell were the only four letter words ever heard. And they, they were spoken only by the Reverend Billy Graham or Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. But if, but if you've tuned in lately, you've probably noticed things have changed. Primetime television has become America's obscenity central. What used to be the family hour is now home to, you know, bastards and sons of bitches, shitheads, dicks and assholes. That's before the first commercial. Fucked up, fucked over, fucked off and fucked you are the common coin of award-winning shows. As for movies, well, the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, is going to have to come up with a new rating category. I don't know, maybe something, something like Y, Y W B Y F E. You won't believe your fucking ears. But show business, show business is the only place you, you have you hear obscenity. It's it's everywhere. Driving through Costco's parking lot the other day, I came close to an elderly matron. And her default reaction was, you fucking trying to fucking kill me, you dumb fuck. Out to dinner last night, lobster night, at a local fish house. And, and before we could sit down, we heard from the adjoining table, Jesus Christ, son of a bitch lobster, I can't crack your fucking claw. The man was cursing his lobster. Tell you the Pope could stand on the balcony and yell, eat shit, you Muslim terrorists, assholes, and only be admonished for being politically incorrect. So, so what's our problem with a freer use of language, you ask? Are we pussy-whipped prudes? Absolutely, fucking lutely not. Do we believe in the First Amendment? Absolutely, yes. But we see a great danger in the overuse of obscenity, a loss in this, in this dilution of strong language, this mainstreaming of once taboo speech. Now, language is a powerful tool. It allows us to release our emotions, to express our, our innermost feelings. It's, it's liberating to tell someone to go fuck yourself when it really means something. But what happens when, when those words have lost their meaning through, through overuse? What happens when some guy in, on the freeway in a pickup truck cuts off some guy in an SUV? Well, the guy in the SUV is furious. He gets chased, screams out his window that the driver of the truck is a blind bastard, a son of a bitch, a cocksucker should have his balls cut off. But the words give him no satisfaction. They, they, they have no impact. The driver of the pickup just smiles and flips him the bird. The guy in the SUV 
reaches for the glove compartment. On the news that night, we hear of another road rage incident. We also have to listen to some truly obscene language, guns, shootings, and killings. So that's, that's our opinion. What do you think? Or don't you give a flying fuck? Cut.